Recently, we made a video on the Synology DS920 Plus NAS. Check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. You loved the review, but questions were asked about what this little unit could do completely maxed out. So let's do it. After the release of our DS920 Plus review, one of our viewers asked us why we didn't test the NAS fully maxed out. And it got us thinking, how much better would the DS920 Plus be if we had added in dedicated read and write cache NVMe disks, upgraded the RAM to 8 gigabytes, and bonded the network interfaces together? Would we unleash an entirely new beast or just see marginal improvement? Well, we aim to find out. First stop for us was getting a few NVMe SSDs to install in the unit. For cache disks, we landed on two 500GB Samsung EVO 980 NVMe disks capable of read speeds up to 3500MB a second and write speeds up to 3000MB a second. Fast, yes, but equally important, affordable at $70 each on Amazon. Let's get the disks installed. Like we showed in the last video, the NVMe slots on the DS920 Plus are super accessible just by popping off two doors on the bottom of the unit and installing both disks. Quick and easy. Now let's get to the RAM upgrade. Back to the Amazons where we picked up a single stick of 4GB of DDR4-2666 RAM. 8GB is the maximum officially supported quantity of RAM the unit will accept. We've read others online have been successful in installing more than this, but we're going to do what Synology says here. Like the installation of the NVMe disks, installing the RAM is quick and easy. We'll remove the disks to expose the sodium slot on the inside right side, stick in the RAM, and put the disks back in. Boom, just that simple. Okay, now that all that hardware is installed, let's go back to the DSM, check to see if it's healthy, and set up our new SSDs. We'll also touch on setting up a bond on the two network interfaces. Once we're logged into DSM, let's pop over to the control panel app and open Info Center. You can see that the unit now has eight gigabytes of RAM, which means our four additional gigabytes of RAM we just installed is fully functional. Awesome. Let's head over to Storage Manager and set up the SSD cache now. We'll click on SSD cache, and currently we see no SSD caches set up in the system. We'll click on create at the top, leave the read write radio button checked, and click next. Okay, here we can see the two Samsung NVMEs we just installed a bit ago. We're gonna select both NVMEs to be part of the read write cache and hit next. Synology really wants you to know that they haven't tested these SSDs for compatibility and encourage us to go check out their compatibility list. If you're concerned about what drives to choose, head over there and check first. However, I'm not concerned about data loss with the Samsung NVMe disks we chose. Now we need to choose which RAID type we'll be setting up our cache disks in. And we really only have one option here because we only have two NVMe disks, so we'll leave it RAID 1 and click Next. Caching operations take system memory, and for those who haven't upgraded their RAM, this is an opportunity to control the amount of SSD caching you want to set up and its RAM impact to your system. We're going to fully utilize the entire NVMe disks we installed, so we'll leave it as is, and because we've upgraded our RAM in the NAS, we can easily assume the RAM cost of 189 megabytes. One last stop, Synology wants you to know that automatic protection mechanism will be enabled on the cache, and that any existing data on the NVMEs will be wiped when the RAID 1 volume is prepared. We'll click the checkbox and hit OK. And now we'll wait for the cache to be built. DSM will dismount our volume and then remount it when it builds the cache disk, and once it's complete, we'll see our cache. All right, let's take a look at our bonded network setup. We'll head back over to the control panel and click on Network. We've already set up the bond, so we'll give you an overview here. Let's click on the Network Interface tab at the top and you'll see Bond 1, which is our bonded connection. From the dropdown, you can see we've bonded the two network interfaces on the DS920 Plus and together they equal 2000 megabits per second or 2 gigabits. There are many ways to configure a bond based on your needs and your network switch's capabilities. We've configured our bond to be an IEEE 802.3 AD dynamic link aggregation, also known as an LACP trunk. This aggregates the bandwidth from both connections into a single connection providing, in theory, all of the bandwidth of the connected interfaces. So in our case, that means 2 gigabits of throughput. Now, 
To use an LACP trunk, you must have a switch that supports it. So before we go and attempt to set this up, you need to understand what the capabilities of your network switch are and if you can support it. This is why we're not going into detail about how to set up an LACP trunk with this NAS, because everyone's network gear is different. That being said, there are other options for creating a bond as well. Some, like the adaptive load balancing option, do not require a managed switch, but keep in mind, you will not see aggregated performance increases with ALB or active standby bonds. Our DS920 Plus is connected to a Ubiquiti USW Pro 24 managed switch. And as you can see here, we have aggregated the two ports on the switch side in an LICP trunk with the NAS. Let's get to testing now. Once again, we'll be using Windows file sharing to test the performance of our souped up DS920 Plus using Crystal Dismark the same way we did in our first video testing its performance out of the box. Let's get to those results. And woo boy, do we have some results to unpack. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an eye chart, so I'll cut straight to the chase here. Having added read and write caches, doubled the amount of RAM, and created an LACP trunk connection made essentially no difference to the performance of the NAS. There were small performance differences, specifically during random read and write tests where having the super fast NVMe cache made a difference, but nothing mind blowing. The simple truth here is that in this testing, where one host is accessing the NAS directly, you won't see any better performance. That's not to say that you won't see better performance in a multi-computer environment, but as the results show, with a single computer accessing the NAS, it makes little difference. But what you say about the bond? Well, I'm so glad you asked. See, there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding as to what a bonded LACP trunk does for a host. It's not uncommon for people to assume that if you bond two one gigabit network connections together and create a resultant two gigabit network connection, that they should be able to send double the amount of data down that pipe. And unfortunately, that's just not how any of this works. When you create an LACP trunk with multiple interfaces, you're creating a single logical channel between your device, in our case the NAS, and the network switch. Copying data between your PC and that NAS is a single session and will only send the data over a single connection on the trunk and won't evenly split it between the two connections. When you copy a file, you're opening a single session to the remote host. Now, if you start copying a second, third or fourth file from different PCs on the network, the switch knows about your existing session and that the other sessions are different. So it sends that data across the bonded network connections equally. In aggregate, you get more bandwidth. Where does that leave us? Well, basically, throwing more hardware into the little NAS didn't change it into a different beast, at least not in this use case. While this might be disappointing for some, I want to remind you that the network performance of the DS920 Plus, even without all the extras, is still impressive for its 1 gigabit connectivity. And it's likely that adding additional RAM and caching would help more with apps like Plex and other packages you install on the NAS. All that being said though, however, it is good to know that you don't need to throw even more money into the NAS once you buy it and fill it with drives to get great performance. Thanks for watching this video. We would love to know what you think, so get down those comments and tell us. Tell us more what you'd like to see us test with this NAS. We would love to hear from you. If this is the first time you've seen us, subscribe like right now. If you like what we do here and want to be all social, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And lastly, get on our Discord. It's a great growing community of people who love tech and we'd be happy to have you. Thank you for watching and we will see you again soon.